Today's episode of Variant is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. Today on Variant, I talk about how Batman Arkham City needs to be made into a movie. It needs to be made into a movie. Welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than I miss the rocket power cartoon on Nickelodeon. I'm your host, Aris Quinones. Now, we all know it's only a matter of time before Warner Brothers and DC Entertainment reboot their Batman movie franchise, as it's definitely their number one comic book movie franchise. And let's be honest, the only good comic book movie franchise they have going for them, which the chances of that changing is 99.9% .9 as the Man of Steel looks amazing. But when they do reboot the Batman movie franchise, I have a few suggestions for Warner Brothers and DC, most of which I think you guys will agree with. So let's get into it. Yeah. Warner Brothers announced a little while ago that if Man of Steel is successful, which there's no way it's not going to be, they will move forward with a Justice League movie, which they will then ask Zack Snyder to direct. Which is funny because I've been saying ever since I saw Watchmen that Zack Snyder should direct a Justice League movie, because I think he just does extremely well with large cast and characters who have huge personalities. Plus, he's no stranger to comic book based movies as he's directed 300, Watchmen, and most recently, Man of Steel. Now, I only bring all this up because Batman is obviously going to be in the Justice League movie, and after the Justice League movie, he's most likely going to be getting a reboot for his own movies. But his introduction to the Justice League film is crucial as the tone we get for Batman in the JL movie will most likely be the tone we get for him in his own movie since we can only assume they will be trying to build their universe and pumping out independent movies for each member of the Justice League much like Marvel did with all their heroes. Only DC would have to do this in reverse since they're starting with the Justice League movie and not leading up to it. Now, I'm pretty much saying all of this because when they do introduce Batman in the Justice League movie and start making another Batman trilogy, I think they should go the Arkham City slash Arkham Asylum route of Batman. I think we could all agree that we love what Nolan did with Batman, but I know at least for me, I'm ready for a less realistic take on Batman, where characters like Clayface, Poison Ivy, Killer Croc, and Man Bat can all exist. I think this time around, they need to find that line between keeping it realistic and serious but still allowing all that cool fantastical stuff we love from the comics. So bringing it back to what I just said, I think it needs to be like the Arkham City and Asylum games. The games capture one of the most perfect depictions of Batman ever. I'd say up there with Batman animated series and obviously a source material, the comic books. The Arkham games are dark and serious and capture everything we've come to love about Batman. So can you imagine doing a Batman Arkham movie trilogy? Starting off with the yet to be released Arkham Origins game. Obviously, none of us have played it yet, but from the cinematic and what we've seen, the style looks pretty cool. But instead of using it as a prequel, I say use it to start off the new Batman movies. It would be everything my little comic book heart would want. The Arkham games are very stylized from all the buildings in Gotham and environments all the way to the Batmobile and even the lighting of the game. I think for us to get the perfect Batman movie, which by the way, The Dark Knight was pretty darn close to perfect, the movie would have to be a little more stylized, especially for shots of Batman I'm sure all of us fanboys would want, like Batman's iconic pose just watching the city on a telephone wire. Or watching Gotham from a gargoyle while it's raining. It would just add so much more to the film. I think the look and feel of Watchmen would look fantastic for a Batman film, but maybe just a little darker at times. Also, I don't know about you guys, but I've always wanted two things in Batman's costume that we still have never had so far. One, I really want them to give him his black and gray costume instead of the all black costume we always get. I do get why they've always gone with the all black costume as it feels more realistic and stealth and I like it, but personally I think they should change it up and could pull off his most widely known black and gray outfit quite easily. I mean, if they're able to pull off bright red and blue costumes like Spider-Man and Captain America movies, I'm positive they can pull off a black and gray one. They can use a darker gray which would still be stealth but still give contrast to his cowl and bat symbol on his chest. Plus, Batman relies more on his cape to hide him in the shadows which I also think they should utilize more. I pretty much think they should use Batman's updated look from the New 52 which would work perfectly and it would look something like this and it looks amazing it has so much more of a batman feel to me it's like ripped right out of the comics two i think they should give him white eyes i know they kind of already gave us a glimpse of that in the dark knight but since this whole episode is on what i'd want the batman movies to be like when they're rebooted i want them to utilize it more and heck even make them move and have emotion like they do in the comics and cartoons i don't need everything to be super realistic we are talking about combo characters here which I would say is pretty unrealistic already. Even the story from the Arkham games would be amazing where the whole movie is based around Batman being stuck in an asylum and having to deal with all the enemies he's put in there, which would lead into another movie where he's dealing with Arkham City, which would be on an even larger scale. And you can see him just being a bamf zipping around in the city, dealing with all the corrupted people and villains. It would just bring so much joy to my heart. 
Also, I really, really want to see Nightwing in a Batman movie. I don't care how they do it as long as it's Dick Grayson as Nightwing. That is all I care about. Just make it happen, Warner Brothers. They should also get Paul Dini to write or help co-write these movies. He's written some of the best Batman content within the last two decades, such as Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, Batman Return of the Joker, and a bunch of episodes from Batman the Animated Series, and lots of Batman comics. He also freaking invented Harley Quinn. Just look how well it worked out for Marvel getting someone who wrote comics before to write their script, Joss Whedon. I definitely think DC needs to take some pointers from Marvel as far as making superhero movies are concerned. In summary, make Batman Arkham City the movie. Just take the ideas from the games and put them on the big screen. Like I said earlier, they embody everything everyone loves about Batman, so turn them into a movie. I think if they did that, we would have another successful Batman movie franchise on our hands. Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community-inspired creations. Be sure to watch new episodes of The Ben Heck Show each week right here at revision3.com forward slash tbhs. In the latest episode of The Ben Heck Show, Ben gives viewers a valuable wiring tutorial. Don't forget to go to element14.com forward slash tbhs to find out how you can enter to win the latest builds from Ben's show. First up from Wednesday, June 5th, we have Kick-Ass 3 Issue 1. Kick-Ass and Hit-Girl's blockbuster return for the last ever story arc of Mark Miller's and John Romita Jr.'s awesome series. Do not miss this last installment. Here we have Superior Spider-Man Issue 11. The Spider Slayer is scheduled for execution and Mayor J. Jonah Jameson is leaving nothing to chance. To ensure that everything goes according to plan, Jameson's called in the one man he can trust to oversee everything, the Superior Spider-Man. Now we have all new X-Men issue 12. The all new X-Men find themselves face to face with the uncanny Avengers. Next we have Action Comics issue 21. Superman is betrayed by his own DNA and in the backup story, learn the new 52 origin of the parasite. Here we have Detective Comics issue 21. Harper Row joins Batman on a case that leads way back to Detective Comics issue 0. But will the Dark Knight be willing to accept her help? And finally we have Green Lantern issue 21. How Jordan becomes the leader of the most feared and hated group in the universe, the Green Lantern Corps. New faces, new threats, and new beginnings for the Green Lantern comics. Well, that brings another episode to a close, but before I go, it's time to announce the winner of last week's Versus episode. You guys decided Deadpool is the winner. Now, I know some of you guys were like, Eris, that was a poor matchup. You should have put Deadpool up against Deathstroke. Well, like I said in the beginning of last week's episode, it's been done many times before, so I wanted to switch it up for once. Plus, I love both characters, and I know you guys do too, and characters don't always have to have similarities to fight, so I just put two awesome characters up against each other and let you guys do what you want with it. But now, I really must leave you all but remember you can always like our variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related you can also follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Aries underscore Quiñones but I will see you guys next week when I talk about all things comics plus he's no stranger to comic based movies as he's directed 300 Watchmen and most recently Man of Steel and my nose was itching the whole time <laughs>